Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So if you are a DevOps engineer and if you are planning to upgrade in 2026, there are two interesting parts. One is MLOps and other is LLMOps. We discussed a lot about MLOps in the past. In fact, recently I launched a course on Udemy about MLOps. In today's video, let's focus on LLM ops. Now you might have a question. What is the advantage of learning LLM ops in 2026? The fundamental advantage is that because this is a relatively new skill, if you're looking for a job change or if you're looking for freelancing opportunities, you can easily get them using this skill. In fact, you can get high paying job opportunities and high paying freelancing opportunities. So without wasting any time, let's understand what is LLM Ops, why is it needed? On top of that, let's also understand the learning path for LLM Ops. If you are interested, make sure you watch this video till the end. Let's get started. Okay, so what is LLM Ops? LLM Ops stands for Large Language Model Operations. Basically, LLM Ops is a culture that helps in building, deploying, monitoring, and continuously improving large language models in real production systems. Let me make this very, very simple for you. DevOps is for traditional software applications. MLOps deals with machine learning models. In the same way, LLM Ops deals with large language models. So the same principle, same concept that DevOps applies for software development lifecycle, LLM Ops applies that for large language models. At this point, you might have a question, but Abhishek, why not use ML Ops for large language models as well? Because ML Ops deals with models, LLMs, end of the day, are also the models. Let me tell you, there is fundamental difference between the traditional models and large language models. Because of this reason, MLOps cannot be used for large language models. So MLOps deals with models that are small, predictable, and deterministic in nature. Best example, when you're dealing with prediction models. It can be weather prediction model, it can be Netflix recommendation engine. In these cases, MLOps can help you. But when it comes to large language models, they are huge models. So your Netflix recommendation engine, it deals with only the user information of the Netflix users, but large language models are trained on billions of parameters at time. Take example of GPT-5 or maybe take example of Llama model. They are pretty huge models. On top of that, these models are different from traditional models because in this case, output is unpredictable. Also, LLMs are not very cost effective. So if you don't deal with large language models, it can be building them, it can be deploying them, it can be setting up infrastructure for them. If you don't do it in the right way, you will end up spending a lot of money because in this case, everything depends on tokens. Everything depends on requests. Also, large language models, they deal with hallucination. It is also responsibility of LLM of Sinsne to reduce the hallucination. This is not the case with MLOps. In case of traditional models, there is no hallucination. So this does not fall into the category. Finally, here everything is prompt driven, which is not the case of traditional models. So this is why MLOps cannot be applied for large language models. But one thing, an important thing to note here, most of the MLOps tools today, it can be 
ML flow, it can be K serve, it can be Amazon SageMaker. They can all help you with LLM ops as well. So if you know ML ops, it's a great advantage to learn LLM ops. Fine. Now let's understand why LLM ops and what are the steps that are involved in LLM ops. Let's take an example here. Imagine there is an e-commerce platform and management decided to introduce AI customer support chatbot. So basically they want to introduce an AI assistant. Let's say they did not take LLM ops into consideration. So they did not want to implement LLM ops. They just want to go with any large language model on the internet. So they just went to Olama, they downloaded a large language model and they placed it within their application. Let's try to understand the challenges. Now, one of the user logs into the platform and asks a question to the chatbot, can I return a product after 45 days? A very common question that you can expect. Now, because this large language model, it's not aware of your company policies, it's not aware of your company complaints. It just looks the information on the internet. Let's say you used Llama model. It looks at the information on the internet. Let's say it does not find any information about your company. It starts hallucinating. So it looks at any random data and it tells the customer, yes, you can return the product within 60 days. What if? Your company policy is only for 30 days. So you will end up in financial losses. Even riskier thing, you might also end up in some kind of legal issues. Now, because of the hallucination, it might respond with answers against the complaints of your company. So this is the reason why you cannot pick up any random large language model on the internet. They can be very powerful. They can be super good large language models, but you cannot use them as is in your organization. What you need is LLM ops in this case. So basically you take a large language model, you provide it with company policies. So it can be a document, it can be a PDF or it can be large amount of information. You store them in a vector database. Basically, you can even train the large language model on the document, but this is not a recommended approach. Instead, you would go with RAG. Of course, I don't want to confuse you at this point. Just understand the document is stored and indexed by the large language model. Then the LLM ops engineer also restricts the behavior of the large language model. Very simple. In this case, LLM Ops Engineer can tell the large language model if you are not sure, right? So LLM Ops Engineer provides a prompt. If you are not sure about the answer, just say contact support. This single prompt can eliminate any kind of hallucination. This is again part of LLM Ops and also can provide some guardrails you know, it cannot access certain documents or maybe it cannot talk anything against the complaints. On top of that, it is very important part of LLM Ops to constantly monitor the answers of the AA assistant, put them in the feedback loop and end of the day or end of the month, look at the feedback and if required, improve the performance of the large language model. So step one is to take a model that is a large language model, provide it with company policies, maybe using RAG or maybe using, you know, training it, fine tuning it on the document, providing prompt to restrict the behavior, to reduce the hallucination, implementing the guardrails to stop doing it, anything against the complaints, monitoring the behavior, introducing the feedback loop and 
improving the performance of the large language model. That's why in the first statement, you learned LLMOps is building, deploying, monitoring, and continuously improving the performance of the large language model on the production system. Now you might have a question, but Abhishek, how do I learn LLMOps? Very simple. Start with Python. If you follow our channel, there is a Python playlist that is for DevOps engineers. On top of that, I would recommend to learn Fast API. So if you know Python plus Fast API, it's more than good enough. You just need to learn how to make API calls, how to read the data, how to retrieve the data. On top of that, also learn how to make API calls to the LLMs. You also should be good at prompt engineering. We have prompt engineering video on the channel as well. You should be good at RAG and vector databases. RAG is important because the example that I explained here, when you have some internal documents, when you have some uh, complaints, when you have some PDFs, instead of fine tuning or training the large language model on these documents, it is easy and more effective to implement RAG. Monitoring and quadrants, you should be good at observability. Typically, the traditional observability platforms are good enough. Docker and Kubernetes and continuous integration and continuous delivery. Why? Because you need to implement feedback loops. So I can make a statement here. If you know DevOps, you know 40 to 50 percentage of LLM ops. Of course, you should understand the LLM's life cycle. You should know how exactly they are built, how exactly they are deployed. But because you know the concept of DevOps, it becomes easy for you. You already know some of the tools. You already know the culture. You already know the principle. So it is easy for you to transition to LLM ops position. Once again, what are the similarities here? If you are a DevOps engineer, if you want to transition to LLM ops, the similarities are in both of these cases, you use APIs. In both of these cases, you deal with CICD versioning. It can be model versioning. In this case, traditional application versioning. Rollbacks, observability, cost control, infrastructure scaling, Kubernetes, containers. These are similarities between DevOps and LLM ops. So overall, this is about LLM ops. If you are interested in high paying opportunities, if you are interested in freelancing opportunities, give LLM ops a try in 2026. In the near future, I'll also make a complete playlist on LLM ops. It can be on our YouTube channel or it can be on our Udemy. Make sure you follow the channel for regular updates in the space of operations. See you all in the next video. Take care.